$100,000. Well, our next story takes us to Uptown Charlotte to the Brookstone Schools, a nonprofit which opened its doors 15 years ago. It serves mostly struggling, low-income minority families. Carolina Impact's Danielle Koser recently visited the school to learn how it's making a difference. <music> Using colored pencils and crayons, students study vocabulary words. That looks great. Fifth grader Daniel Baldwin focuses on completing the assignment, knowing he has to finish school before pursuing the career of his dreams, working as a police officer. To stand up for people that can't stand up for themselves. Daniel attends Brookstone Schools. Located in Uptown Charlotte, the nonprofit provides nearly 150 students with a faith-based education. Most of these students come from struggling, low-income families. So I know that in addition to being taught, my child is being prayed for. You remember to put your name on it, Mackenzie. Good job. Support from the community made it possible for Michelle Baldwin, a mother of five, to send Daniel and two of her other sons here. There's no way I would have been able to send my children to a private school, a faith-based private school, if we had to pay the tuition. The $8,500 tuition is funded mostly by scholarships. Parents contribute on a sliding scale based on their income. Last year, donations from individuals, foundations, and churches covered 96% of Brookstone's $1.3 million operating cost, helping back its budget and mission to raise the next generation of leaders from Charlotte's inner city neighborhoods. The majority of the students, nearly 80%, are African American. Meanwhile, Asian Americans make up 11% of the school's population. The neighborhood that I live in is on the west side. It leaves a lot to be desired. It is a lower income area, and it, for us, it's home. It's not 33, it's 55. Go ahead and solve that one out. Daniel's older brother, John, says he performed below grade level before enrolling at Brookstone in fifth grade. By the time he left, he was an honor student, graduating high school with a 4.0 grade point average. School leaders say stories like these are common. Last year, Brookstone used a national exam, the Iowa Achievement Test, to measure students' progress. The results showed students experienced over a year's worth of academic growth in just seven months. It was just really good to have a teacher that cared, to know that I was actually important to her and that I wasn't just another kid. So what are your modes playing? John still comes back to Brookstone from time to time, volunteering here while attending Wingate University on an academic scholarship, working toward a degree in psychology. By coming back, I'm showing these students what they could be or what they can do, as in that I'm going to college and that's something that they can see that John went here and he's doing it, so maybe I can do it too. With only 25 employees, the school relies on help from hundreds of volunteers and over 150 lunch buddies like Matt McGrath. Did you play football this past Saturday? Yeah. How was your game? Who works as a data analyst at Bank of America. I look at them and actually see, I see doctors, I see engineers, I see uh, nurses, and it's, it's incredible to see how excited they are about learning. The program pairs students with mentors like Matt, who met Daniel four years ago. Since then, he's come to Brookstone to join Daniel for lunch twice a month. I like eating with my lunch buddy. You think they're gonna make the make it to the Super Bowl this year again? We talk about stuff like football and he likes hockey and stuff like that. One of the things that I've actually seen uh, change about Daniel is uh, him being more attentive and him actually having a conversation with me. And you know, before he was um, kind of a little back offish a little bit. He wasn't sure what to do about me. And uh, it seemed like the more time I spent with him, the more time that he's really opened up to me. One of Daniel's teachers, Elizabeth Melvin, says she's noticed a difference too. I've seen his confidence grow so much. I think he might have come into fifth grade thinking, this is gonna be a big year. I'm not sure if I'm up to this. And just seeing how once he's given support, once he's given opportunity, once he's given instruction, just how much his confidence has grown. <laughs> She says she challenges students in an effort to help them see their full potential. That is why I wake up in the morning. That's why I want to be here, is to really give that gift, whether it's through math, 
reading, writing, science, geography, it can come through in any class. One assignment at a time, teachers work to equip students with the skills they need to succeed academically, socially, and spiritually. School leaders say they're grateful for the chance to be a small part of the bigger picture, helping shape the next generation of children from inner city Charlotte. For Carolina Impact, I'm Danielle Koser reporting. Thanks so much, Danielle. It's always great to see a program making a difference in our community. Well, we're going to continue that conversation right now with a special guest joining me. We have Steve Hall. He's the Brookstone School's head of school. Steve, thanks so much for your time. Thanks for having me today. And fellow Buckeye natives. <laughs> so, I'm excited about that as well. We appreciate you sharing this story with us, and it really is great to kind of uncover hidden gems in our community that are making a difference. You folks are making that difference in these children when they're young. Help us understand a little bit about what that's all about and how that can carry on. Even though you don't have a high school available at this time, you send them out after the eighth grade, but how critical is that toward their success for the rest of their lives? Well, that's a, it's a great, and that's, that's the passion of Brookstone and the passion of the founders was to provide children who wouldn't otherwise receive an opportunity, an opportunity for education and for excellence in character and spirituality so that they could develop and to be the full person they've been made to be. And so we start at kindergarten and we go all the way through eighth grade. And at that point, we really feel, and we've seen as well, that an eighth grader can then go out into the high schools, whether it be Charlotte Mech or, or another Christian school, and go out and continue to make that impact because of the basis. And, and we feel like that we're a launching pad for that transition in their life and uh, that we've provided the building blocks and the foundation and even some of the walls to support that and they can go out. And so we've seen that over and over. You saw that with John in, in the clip is that they have that sense of giving back and of achievement because it was instilled in them in such an, a young age. Now we're talking kids that are in neighborhoods that traditionally have not had the impact of adults that could set a direction or chart a course for them for success in life. How important is it that these are underprivileged, underserved children that are getting sort of that private school opportunity, which usually isn't available because they can't afford to pay for it? Well, not only is it a, an opportunity from a private school that, that has a college preparatory education, but we also surround the school from other people from the community. We could not function without the host of volunteers that give hours, that give donations to these children and spend time with them. So not only are they getting educational capital through the education, but they're getting uh, personal and social capital and spiritual capital through these people that give to them. And so they receive an opportunity of education, but they also receive opportunity of possibilities and of hope because so many people are feeding into them and giving to them and creating this net of support around them, which really sets us apart and makes it unique uh, in the community in that way. You have some goals for some expansion, uh, looking at possibly having a preschool and an after school program and maybe even some residential housing. Talk to us about those those dreams and those goals. Yeah, so again, all that stems from, from really the board and the founders who, who started this and, and have been working on it for years now. And then they were people of vision and people that have a heart for this community and for the children. And so what we want to do is make sure we're doing the best job of serving this community and giving people the opportunity opportunity to give and support that and get the word out as to what we're doing and participate in that. And so yes, those are some of the goals. We do want to double the school size. Um, so we have one grade per class. We want to double to a second grade per class and we want to do that with excellence. We don't want to just grow to grow. We want to continue to, to, to meet those needs. But then also we do have a dream for um, providing residential housing for at least part of our population um, that is just really, really struggling and, and so needs that stability and support that everyone knows a child needs to be successful, to be able to receive the education and, and the benefits that they're getting holistically. And so to provide opportunities for, for some special considerations and be open to that and, and addressing those needs as well. A very large percentage of these students are there on scholarship, correct? Actually, 100% uh, of our students are there on scholarship. And so uh, we are, our funding is 93% uh, comes from private donations. And then the tuition covers about 7% of it. And we do that on a sliding scale 
based on where they're at, but every single child is on significant uh, assistance with that. You pull from a rather diverse area. Talk to us about the communities that you're pulling students from. Yeah, so it's really quite neat, even in a school of our size, um, we have a, a large African American population, um, but we also have a Montagnard population that is predominantly refugee families that are, that are coming to the Charlotte area. Uh, we have a Latino population that continues to grow, and, and that's a reflection of the community. And then also we have um, some African immigrant families that have come to this area. So Charlotte is a great place for people to come and to start their families and, um, and for all different types of communities. And so we provide that opportunity that they wouldn't otherwise have uh, for a private education. We appreciate your input. We appreciate what you're doing in our community and wish you nothing but the best in the new year. Thanks so much for sharing your story with us. Thank you, Amy. If you'd like more information on the Brookstone Schools, head to our website at pbscharlotte.org. Well, from Reverend Billy Graham to Michael